everyone. Welcome to another episode of Downtown Sports. Today, I'm breaking down the divisional round games we saw this past weekend. So let's get right into it. Now, yes, finally, Lamar Jackson did it. He won a playoff game at home the first time he's won a playoff game at home. And he did that coming into this game with just four total postseason touchdowns and seven total postseason interceptions. So slow clap actually no real clap real clap for lamar jackson because he had four total touchdowns in this game and zero picks so already matching the his postseason touchdowns i mean this game was first half doesn't really tell the full story of this game obviously because it was tied at the half 10 10 but second half was all ravens they completely just took over so the ravens offense was slowed down a bit in the first quarter though because the texans implemented the blitz they were blitzing very heavily but jackson did finish seven for eight for 64 yards against the blitz right after the half so not much you can do to slow him down. And again, the game was tied 10-10, but that was because the only touchdown for the Texans was off of a 67-yard punt return touchdown, and then they didn't reach the end zone at all or get any points on the board in the second half. So kudos to the Ravens in that way. Like I said, Jackson finished with four total touchdowns. He had 100 rushing yards, zero picks. He had two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. And a lot of that is because the Ravens O-line gave him so much time in the pocket. Like even if it wasn't a designed run for Lamar, he had so much time that he was able to scramble and pick up those yards. That's why he had two rushing touchdowns. Isaiah Likely and Nelson Aguilar both also hit Pager, likely filling in for the, the tight end position for Mark Andrews, who it does have a chance to come back um, in the AFC Championship game next week against the Chiefs, but it was really just Jackson who threw the team on his back, Jackson in the defense. Now, the Ravens defense, they played lights out as well. They didn't allow a single Texans offensive touchdown. They held stud CJ Stroud to just 175 passing yards. Now, the Texans had a great run, but the Ravens are just the better team, way more well-rounded. I'm very interested to see what the Texans do in the offseason and how they're going to kind of grow on this great base and a uh, great young team that they have moving forward. But Ravens got the dub. They'll be taking on the Chiefs next week. Next up, we got the 49ers beating the Packers 24-21. to And I promise I'm not going to ramble on this one. I'm not going to complain about this one because, yeah, the Packers lost, but they needed to put the game away. It's really on them. 49ers did not play their best ball out there. Brock Purdy uh, was missing passes all night long. A bit, you could blame that on the rain a little bit. Um, thank goodness he had Ayuk to make some very, very clutch third down conversions for him. But the Packers could have put this game away, and they didn't. Aaron Jones, he had his fifth 100-plus rushing yard game in a row. He rushed for 108 yards. And the Packers played three quarters pretty much of good football, and then they just got beat in the end. I think that's where a lot of the youth sticks out as well. From, but from where this team started to where they ended in making this kind of run, like I'm still very impressed and still very excited for the future for them to come. But on the 49ers side, I mean, they really took care of the ball. They didn't have a single turnover. Kittle had 81 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he only had four receptions though, but he bully balled his way um, down the sideline at one point, setting up the CMC, just absolute killer touchdown run because no one can stop CMC. He's literally a walking cheat code. CMC had two touchdowns on the night. His second was the one that pretty much iced the game with just a minute and two seconds left in the game. That was after a 69 yard touchdown drive led by Brock Purdy who he actually went six for seven on 47 yards. And like I said, he had a, a clutch third down conversion to Brandon Ayuk and the Packers just couldn't stop them on that drive. And I mean, Purdy showed up in the fourth quarter and loved it. And that was also a big comparison, but the nail in the coffin, it wasn't even necessarily Anders Carlson missing that field goal. I mean, we saw another missed field goal last night, but it really was, I just, I don't know how on first and 10, maybe Love didn't realize it was first and 10, how he throws up all cross body. I mean, I, I thought we were getting someone who was more Jordan or more Aaron Rodgers-esque, but we got someone who looked just like Brett Favre. Like that was, that was some things Brett Favre did when, oh, anyway, don't need to rant about that. But I just don't know in what, kind of what was going through Jordan Love's head when he wasn't even looking across. He was throwing to no one. It was very reckless play, very reckless throw and pretty much, not pretty much, it did seal the game with that pick there. So and another thing is just the Packers couldn't get it done in the red zone. The Niners were great on stopping them and just or just holding them to field goals. They stopped them on a big fourth and one, so they didn't get any points out of that in the first quarter. And then they just finished with two field goals in the first half. Doesn't matter. They won. They're moving on to the NFC Championship against the Lions. And next up, we've got the Lions beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 31 to 23. And man, congrats to the Lions. I'll say it again. Hey, you guys just deserve this. You guys deserve all this playoff run that you're making. I think it's only the second NFC Conference Championship they've made ever. So I'm very excited to see how Dan Campbell is preparing this team for this upcoming game. And all in all, like, what more do I need to say about Aiden Hutchinson? Like, this young guy is just leading the pass rush in such an incredible way. Like, he had four solo tackles and a sack in this game and put so, so much pressure on Baker Mayfield. And the thing about Mayfield that kind of... 
I would say cost him the game is that he was very, very predictable. So they were able to put so much pressure on him and also were able to scheme out two picks. I mean, the pick that pretty much iced the game at the very end of the game by one of the Lions linebackers. He said after the game that they they watched film. They watched film. They knew what Baker was going to do. Baker's Baker. He's going to continue to do what he's going to do. And if he doesn't change it, hey, it's going to cause turnovers. But just like all the other games we saw this weekend, this game was close. I mean, it was tied going into the third quarter. I kind of thought we had an overtime watch going on, but Bogoff did throw his second touchdown with six minutes left of the game. And that was pretty much the ceiling moment. Goff finished 30 for 43 on the night for 287 yards and two touchdowns. Amon Ra had another great game like he always does. He had 77 yards and a touchdown, and that touchdown finished off a very, very nice 10-play, 89-yard touchdown drive in the second half. Jameer Gibbs was, I think, such a star factor in this game. He had a huge 31-yard touchdown run that was, like, breaking right through a hole, and I think really switched the momentum in Detroit's favor and also proved that not just that run, but the amount of times he was just streaming down the sideline and looked untouchable. Uh, I just... For all of the the kind of nonsense talk he got in the offseason about why would the Lions take him this high, I think that he really put a nail in that coffin and kind of proved that he deserved to get drafted where he did. Um, and especially when you talk about the Bijan versus the Gibbs comparisons, I think now that Gibbs has been getting more touches on the ball – not Bijan's fault. We all know why Bijan wasn't getting touches on the ball, that I think Gibbs has been a little bit more in the limelight. And I think this was a great, great rookie performance for him. And now Baker did have a chance to tie it up in the fourth, but again, Lions pass rush is just playing top tier right now. And with great pressure and great coverage, Baker got picked and that pretty much ended the game. Now Baker did still throw for 349 yards and Mike Evans, he had eight receptions and 147 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, they definitely put up a fight. This Lions team is just more complete. They're grittier. They had more fight in them and they won the fourth quarter and that's the reason that they're moving on to play the Niners next week. And lastly, we have the Chiefs taking on the Bills. Chiefs win at 27 to 23. Poor Josh Allen, man. He gets so close. He gets so close and just... Patrick Mahomes is just the bane of his existence. I mean, what are you going to do? Bet against Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Also, I went 4-4 four for, four for my pick, so we were 100% this weekend. But uh, it's, it's hard because on paper, the Bills' offense is just better. But... Stefan Diggs was having a very weird game yesterday, last night. I mean, he had that dropped, like, would have been an 80-yard touchdown. I mean, Josh Allen threw this incredible ball downfield. Stefan Diggs was one-on-one -on -one right through his hand. So it was just stuff like that where he kind of wasn't really playing, like, the stud wide receiver that we normally see. And then you talk about a broken Bills linebacking unit who was going down to, like, their fourth string. I mean, when you're, your defense is that injured and you're playing against playoff Patrick Mahomes and this kind of unit, it, it's not surprising that the Chiefs scored on five of their first six possessions and the Bills really couldn't stop them at that point. I also think that the play calling and the, the game plan on the Bills offensive side was very weird. They were playing very short ball, a lot of, a lot of short the flats, a lot of James Cook handoffs, a lot of checkdowns. Um, Josh Allen ended up throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, I think 16 times. It, and had to do like these crazy trick plays that ended up getting them like two, three, four yards. I, I mean, it worked a little bit. They got points on the board, but I just think that they, the time of possession for them was 37 minutes versus 22, 30. And so they had all of that time, but they couldn't get more points on the board to kind of build a bigger lead between them and the Chiefs. Neither team led by more than seven throughout the entire game, and there were five different lead changes. So I just think, I mean, Shakir's had been playing pretty well recently. He had that incredible 13-yard touchdown catch right in front of the pylon in the corner of the end zone. So I don't know why they didn't kind of try to be more aggressive through the air. I mean, another reason why the Chiefs kind of locked down this game in the end is that Patrick Mahomes was three for three on passes longer than 20 yards, which throughout the entire season, they were one of the worst teams to do that because they didn't have any wideouts to catch the ball. And I don't think the, I mean, that 80 yard bomb would have been won by the Bills, but I don't think they had more than one. So definitely the Chiefs won the battle through the air in this one. And giving the Chiefs more of their kudos as well. I mean, the Patrick Mahomes had a near perfect passer rating, 17 for 23, 215 yards. Yards, no picks, two touchdowns to Travis Kelsey, who hadn't scored in eight games. So they were both playing very well and very in sync with each other. The Chiefs also averaged 6.6 .6 yards on the ground. Mahomes had a couple of nice runs. Pacheco had 97 yards and a touchdown. But again, the Bills defense was so weird. And I think the Bills offense had a chance to, to kind of put more points up that they didn't do. Not to mention the missed field goal kick by Bass. Bass. Bass, who could have tied the game up right there. That one was a talk about field goals in the playoffs, man. That is just probably the most stressful situation, but you got, it's your job. You got to do it there. Um, and then weird play calling. I'm not going to comment on the fake punt. 30 yard line to DeMar Hanlon. I, you're on your own 30 yard line in a playoff game. That's it's a close playoff game at home. 
I'm sorry. Please, can someone please tell me why you think that was a good idea? Or does no one think it was a good idea? I don't know. That's all I got for today. Quick little recap for all of these games. Comment what you think about some of the weird decisions some of the head coaches made. Uh, Jordan loves insane crossbody pick. And yeah, how these games went. Thanks guys for being here. <laughs>